Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. and you in here we're talking about our people come on Col Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit don't you know that you were spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit huh philosophy and vain deceit meaning you were deceived by what somebody taught you and you don't care finish it. After the tradition of men and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Because that's what God says. Not to think after your own thoughts, but think after what the Bible says. Give me Isaiah 1 and 3. Think after what the Bible says. Because our people are foolish. They are insane. And they don't care about their people at all. That hooping and hollering, you're not putting no fear in anybody. You're just, you're just busting a brain vessel. Come on. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner. Listen to what God says about you so-called blacks and Latinos. God says an ox is a dumb animal, but he knows who his God is. He's not confused on that. Come on. And the ass, his master's grill. And the donkey, another dumb animal. He knows where his homeland is, but you don't know where you come from. We'll say, where are you from, black man? And you'll say, Homestead, Homewood, the hill, before the slave ships. Oh, oh I don't know. I'm just African. Or, yeah, or you'll say things like the earth. But everybody else know where they're from, what land was promised to them. But you, that's what we're out here to teach you. That's what we're out here to teach our people. Stop acting like you just don't need no knowledge. Because we all need knowledge. Right. If you didn't need knowledge, you wouldn't be broke in the ghetto, I would you? I don't even know what that means. Yeah, that's wicked as hell. That's why you're in the ghetto, bro. Come on. But Israel, do it not know. But Israel, you Israelites, you don't know nothing. You don't know who your God is. You don't know where you're from. You ain't know. Where, you don't know where you're coming or where you're going. You know nothing. All you do is argue. You argue with us as if we're saying some evil stuff. You argue with us as if we're saying, "Yo, brother, take this gun out and shoot your other brother in the brain. Kill him dead." You would think that's what we're preaching, huh? Yeah. You would think. You would think by what we're saying and by the way you're acting that we're actually teaching wrong. You would think that on the outside looking in. But you're the one that's wrong. Read it again. The ox knoweth his owner. The ox, a dumb animal, know who his God is. And the ass is master's grip. The donkey, the jackass, knows where he's from. Come on. But Israel, but Israel, you Israelites, do it not know. You don't know nothing. Stop pretending that you know. Come on. My people, do it not consider. And you'll argue. You act like you're considering all of this great knowledge that we're reading out of the Bible. You act like you're about it. But in reality, you're not even considering it. You don't care. And those of you that are listening, and those of you who are in agreement, some of y'all are 
scared to act like it. You know why? Because you worship God in fear. You worship God in fear. If we're lying, say we're lying. If we're taught, what? If we're lying, say we're lying. God's word is true. That's right. God's word. That's what Romans say. Let God be true and every man a liar. That's what Romans say. So who's lying? Is it us or is it you? Our simple nation, our people laden with iniquity, a sea of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They are gone away backwards. Listen to what God just said about you oxes and you jackasses. You hear that? God said, you're a nation of sinners. You forsake the law of God and you fail backwards. Meaning you're operating in the opposite direction of what you were created to be. We're going to read that again. We're going to read it again. Our sinful nation, our people laden with iniquity. Meaning you're overloaded with sin. That's why our women dress out of order. And the black man compliment them on their inappropriate dressing. You know why? Because all you care about is abusing her body. That's all you care about. You don't care about making her an honorable woman. But why should he make you an honorable woman if you walk unhonorably? Huh? Huh? Why? Why? Would a black man want to make you an honorable woman if you walk around dishonorably? Let's be real. We're here to tell you right now, your booty shorts up your butt is wicked as hell. Your pants up your camel toe is wicked as hell. I don't care what anybody say. I don't care what nobody say. They are lying to you. Yeah, she's right. Hey, so you're right. Hey, sis. Listen. Let me do the run of me 22 and 5. That ain't going to get you nothing. You're going to die if you don't repent. We don't, God don't care about you going to school. You're not learning about his laws. Why would I learn about his laws? He never had law. The only thing he had was his knowledge that he's trying to get back. Okay, what else do? Watch this. Do the run of me. Here goes his law right here. Chapter 22, verse 5. The woman, look at you, you said your dick. That's why the Bible talks about the evil black woman. You're a damn demon. Read. The woman, that's why, I, I did know it. That's why I'm going to blast you, because you a damn demon. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Unlike these thirsty Negroes telling you you look good in your booty shorts, you look disgusting. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And you men that dress like women with your shaved face, you look disgusting. Read it again. The woman shall not wear the what pertaineth to a man. A woman's not supposed to dress like a man. Look at that. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. But y'all think this is okay. You a grown woman. Give me Proverbs 7 and 10. You a grown woman. Hey, that's right. I am a grown man. You damn right I'm a grown man. And a grown man don't accept that for his daughters. You hear that? You damn right I'm a grown man. And a grown man don't accept that for his daughters. Come on. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. Turn around and get the harlot. This is what the Bible says. Read it again. There met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. Meaning dressed like a hoe. When you're dressed like that, you act like that. Mama, hey, listen, my mama though was married and had all of her children by the same dude. Well, no, when she got, she got him by my dad. Verse 11, she is loud. She's loud. Meaning she's loud, she talk too much. Act like a man talking about her rubber dildo. The hell, what man's behind are you sticking that in? 
I ain't doing nothing, no such thing. That's evil as hell. What the hell would I be? Why would I think like that? That's evil as hell. Even when I was in wickedness, I wouldn't have thought like that. Read. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. She's loud and she's stubborn. And her feet abide not in her house. You out here right now acting a fool. You out here. What's up, cousin? You out here acting a fool. Read it again. She is loud and stubborn. You hear what the Bible say about you? Loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Because a woman's supposed to be in her house raising her children, not arguing with men, trying to bring back their people, back to the greatest people that they ever walked the face of the earth. You're right. I was. But I'm going to ask you, should I stay a drug dealer? Huh? That's like a woman that want to get married now. Should she stay a hoe? Let's be real. Should a man stay a whoremonger? When you get married, should a man stay a whoremonger? Yay or nay? Yay or nay? Should a man who gets married stay a whoremonger? Yay or nay? Why ain't nobody answer? When it's time to argue, you talk. When it, I ain't talking about you. When it's time to argue, black men talk. If I'm to get married, should I sleep with all the other women? Oh, oh well. So you know what that's called? That's called repenting. I was a lot worse than a drug dealer. I was a lot worse than just a drug dealer. That's why I'm qualified to say what I say. That's why I'm qualified to say what I say. Yeah, you can act all different if you want to. But a lot of you, you, you act that way on the sideline. Because I was a drug dealer on this block. I was a gang member on this block. Exactly. So that's the point. You can't stay a gang member. You can't stay a drug dealer. A womanizer. How the hell are you mad at us? Because we out here preaching that a man better marry a black woman. The hell is wrong with you, black woman? You insane. Because the white man taught you that. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Give me Proverbs 3. Yep. Because a lot of times we walk around and we act like we got so high self-esteem about ourselves. We just, we just got high self-esteem about ourselves. And then y'all say, y'all say slide remarks instead of just coming like men and say, let's, let's talk about it. Reason why we gotta, we gotta holler is because you pretend you ain't listening. So we gotta make sure we're piercing through the evilness of your conversations. Right. Come on. Proverbs chapter three, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. You know what it means to envy not your oppressor? Meaning don't try to be like him. That's what you're trying to be like, being a gang member. You're trying to be like their mafia. The, the, the gang and the gangster comes from their, 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 uh, their word. The gangster was them. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. So my thing would be, for everybody that got high self-esteem, the last thing you should have on is the white woman's wigs. Right? Because how many black men walk around with blonde afro wigs or, or tracks in their hair or what do they call highlights and blonde streaks? How many black men walk around like that? But why is it that the black women walk around like that? But they got their head up in the air like they got so high self-esteem. But then you turn around and get them on camera. They're twerking. Is that the way for a mother to act? Twerking? That's ridiculous. That's what we've been reduced to. That's why the Bible gave us a dress code back to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. This ain't our words. This is God's words. If you're mad, you're not mad at me. If you're mad, you, you are not mad at me. So the Bible says to choose none of his ways. Even the craziness. Don't choose their ways. 
because they are crazy. That's why they can slaughter 200 million of your people without batting an eye, because that's not a sane person's action. That's a sickness. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Why ain't your pastor teaching you that, black man, black woman? Amen. What? They, they lie. Yeah. Why ain't pastor tell you not to have a dress on with your drawers showing? Huh? If you can see a woman's drawers, she's dressed out of order. If you can see the curves of her body, she's dressed out of order. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a woman's not supposed to dress like a man, and a man's not supposed to dress like a woman. Yeah, you're right. And a woman ain't supposed to be a man with a strap-on dildo, neither. Sis, you shouldn't even be talking to me like that. Because I I'm not going to disrespect you. I'm going to tell you, you're the greatest people that ever walked the face of the earth. But it's up to you to like it or not. That's the point. I'm not going to, you're a cult. Look, you got horse hair in your head. That's a cult. You're in the cult of the cults. That's what a horse is called, a cult. A baby horse is called a cult. You're a cult. You're a cult. Acting like a man. That's a cult. No, listen, sis, you got me wrong. You got me, you are my sister, whether you like it or not, but you got me wrong to think I'm scared of anybody out here. You got me wrong to think I'm scared of anybody. You, I'll go in any crowd, any trap house, and say what I'm saying right now. Anywhere. That's right. Anywhere. I'll say whatever I'm going to say in any trap house, wherever they gambling at. I'll say it to your face, to everybody's face. I don't care if you like it or not. All you can do is kill me. But I, I've been living that life my whole life. You think I'm scared of that? I desired that every day I woke up. I ain't a new Negro from the block. I ain't them young dudes that just came on the block. I lived it my whole life. So... Am I supposed to be right? Living a life of treachery? No, that's wicked. That's why I said I can say what I say. And I can show you how to change your life based off of these laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. Back to Leviticus 23. Back to Leviticus 23. Because nobody out here know any laws of God. You don't follow them. If you do, we can't tell. What you say, sis? All right, well, hold on. You said how will we know? Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Is that my words or is that God's words? So when we say how do we know, like if a dude is a homosexual walking by, how would I know he's a, you got that in Sirach? A man is known by his looks. Because the sister did ask a good question. And despite what you think, you are my sister. Whether you don't like it or not, you're still my sister. Whether I get hurt out here preaching this word, you're still my sister. I don't give a damn. You're my little brother. Depending on your age, you represent my son. I'ma say it again and again. Come hell or high water, it doesn't matter. Where you at? Come on. So right, chapter 19 and verse 29. A man may be known by his look. A woman and a man both would be known by their look. So she said, how would we know if a person is dressed inappropriately. It's the same way you know if a person's a homosexual. Unless they're hiding their homosexuality with that masculine uh, appearance. But time will tell. They move a certain way just like vampires move in Blade. Remember he said, we, I can tell they're vampires by the way they move, by the way they smell. You can tell a wicked person by the way they move, the way they look. Read it again. A man may be known by his looks. One that had understanding 
by his countenance. So somebody by their understanding would be able to identify the next person by the way that they look. It's not hard. It's not hard. Like I can see that sister's draws. Not you. I'm not talking to you, sis. But I can see your butt crack, though. I'm supposed to look and tell you what you're not supposed to do. It's that simple. I'm not a blind man. What are you, crazy? You, y'all trying to say to me that I'm crazy. Come on. When thou meetest him, amen. Read it again. A man may be known by his look and one that had understanding about his countenance. So when I got understanding, you'll be able to know him when you look him in the eye. You'll be able to know him when you look him in the eye. Give me 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2, what is that, 15? You stripping too, sis? The stripper demons out here or something? Huh? Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things. So we're going to judge what we see inappropriately. Huh? Hey, sis, don't let that brother entice you to tell you that's cute. That's evil. You know what? Because that type of dude would never marry you. He's only going to use you. you. But you ain't listening to what I said. I didn't say that dude. I said that dude. You understand? We're always going to be married. Read it again. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. So the Bible says he's that spiritual judgeth all things. So we're going to judge everything. And you're not going to tell us nothing. Come on. Yet he himself is judge of no man. So when we come out here, you ain't going to judge us. You're not going to tell us nothing. You know why? Because you're not walking the walk. You're not talking to talk. You need to just be quiet and listen. If you listen and learn, there would be less argument. It don't matter if you, you're going to hear it because somebody's going to hear it. Somebody's going to hear it. Back to Proverbs 7 and 10. All three, what does that mean? But well, what does all three mean? I, I, you caught me off guard with that one. So, Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. Listen to the Bible. Yeah, get, what, get mad if you want to. You only get mad at, the, at, at God. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth